And Robert <laughs> kills the team in the house. How's everyone doing today? We're doing I love today. me. It's I love me some Dr. Kilts. I, I'm going to put in a thousand bucks. I haven't pushed the button yet, so you'll get it sometime oh, wow. today. I'm, that's uh, my. Oh my that's God, my I'm going to cry. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm going to cry. And, and, I, so and I got to tell you, this is such an important thing. And uh, I just got a, a, a little bit of, of Sean there. You know, he's a rock star, he's really uh, been a leader in this. And so many, so many more people are, are joining in. And Carnivore is the most kick ass, amazing thing. I was in clinic this morning talking to patients all around the country and and um, they just they haven't heard this story and they're suffering from the exact same thing that that uh, we're talking about is is a standard practice of medicine is leading people to slaughter and we're mm -hmm. gonna stop it absolutely yep that's right all right, I'm so, so I thankful. I'm asking the first question, remember? Because I'm just Yeah, Ali's got the first question. <laughs> I was just going to say real, real quick before Ali does it. I'm, I'm so happy you're here, Dr. Kills. We're really thankful you're here. And I hope you don't mind, but I got to show you this real quick. Documented stories yes. that matter. I've played that like 20 times today. That was when we spoke last time. You said it's the documented stories that matter. And that resonated with me so well because that's the whole thing with this carnivore diet documentaries, documenting the stories. They're so powerful and sharing them. So uh, I thank you for that. If I had to pay you a licensing fee for using that, I'd owe you a lot of money now because I kept playing it <laughs> over and over again. So it encapsulates everything we're trying to do with the documentary. So thank you so much for being here. I know we have limited time. Alia, 40th okay. birthday today has the first question for you. Happy birthday. Thank you. So it's an important datum that will tie into my question. So six months ago, more or less, I started eating this way. I would say I'm pretty much like 95% perfect, but it's changed everything. Within like three weeks, my period was normal and uh, I experienced no pain and I've suffered from endometriosis. It got a lot easier after I had babies. Um, but it was terror for years. Um, I did get pregnant very fast two times. Like within a month of trying, I got pregnant twice. Um, so if you would have asked me six months ago, do you want to have another baby? I would have been like, no freaking way. No way. No way am I ever having another baby. Pregnancy sucked. It was terrible. Two C-sections. So here's my question. Within like a month and a half on carnivore, my sex drive went through the roof and then the baby drive went through the roof. Would it be safe for a woman who's 40 years old on carnivore to have another baby? What do you think of that? Uh, all day long. The, the age, age is a number. The, the feeling is in the mind. And when you are carnivore, you get back to our ancient nature as, as hunters. We were in the caves. And we didn't have all the stress and struggles of devices and vices. Uh, we were living on the land in the way we likely should have lived. And we were focused on feeding and making love and making babies and building families. And we've lost that. And I, I talked to us today. I, uh, I had a, a, a couple uh, uh, high BMI over 55, considered morbidly obese. Um, they won't take care of her because she's too overweight. They won't help her. And and no one has given her the answer that her only problem is is that she's eating a plant based low animal fat diet and that's the problem. And when you go carnivore, uh, you, it's true your your sex drive goes up on both sides. By the way, and you you realize that um, you're flattered, fed, and made love to. And what more do you need? And babies just show up because the family <laughs> is ultimately the only reason we're doing any of this. Right. Oh, I'm not sure if it will happen, but it's definitely it's not we're not not trying to do that at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the universe didn't say you had to try. You know, I always say, try. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you, our sensuality and sexuality is being deformed because the, of the the non proper human diet. And and that's is it. Uh, plants make all the chemicals to make us a little crazy. Plus, the sugars damage our reproductive organs right away. Mm -hmm. And the abortion pill and the birth control pill are made of plants. Mm -hmm. And so there's no wonder, wonder everyone's miscarrying or infertile uh, and and don't feel like that they can have a, a sensual relationship with their partner anymore. 
to well, I would I do want to make mention to to the patient, whoever that might be that you saw this morning. I started out with a BMI of sixty seven point nine. So and now I'm at like twenty eight ish BMI, something like that. Something in the twenties, okay? So there's hope for you. If you get on this and try this out, it could radically change your life and it doesn't take forever. It just takes it one little choice in the right direction, one foot after the other. And and also I want to say thank you for dude, you're always the most positive guy in the room. And it is it is so inspiring. And I thank you for that. Well, Sean, is yeah, listen, I think this is one of the most important things because I always focused on mindfulness and positivity. I read The Secret years ago and I was like, okay, that's the focus. But Jesus Christ actually taught this to us like a couple thousand years ago. And when we realize that everything happens the way it's supposed to and we can use the, the struggles and the challenges as our training grounds to, to improve and live a better life and, and recognize we all have problems. It's the nature of life mm -hmm. and they're there to build us in a better way. And so the sharing the carnivore idea is is something that it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be a struggle. But the last I looked, eating steak and eggs every day is so bad. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> and, and one interesting. Uh, well, one thing I tell everyone, being obese is not the cause of any disease. And adipose tissue is actually the healthiest, most important tissue you carry on your body. We've been maligning fat, but if there's a famine and you're skinny, you're fertilizer fast. And ultimately, it turns out the adipose tissue contains all the minerals, all the vitamins, all the amino acids, and all the simple sugars, along with all the fatty acids that are required in your survival and in creating a baby. And so when people just, again, science says obesity is the problem and being fat is the cause of all disease, they've just got it all wrong. It's the food we recommend that sits in the bowels and that it's secreting sugars and all the toxins and the antigens and the fermentation that's damaging our bodies, not the fatty tissue at all. Mm -hmm. the all that is just a symptom of the problem. The problem that, is shoving our face with all that stuff it was never intended to have. It, it really is. Occam's razor, simple answer is the one. And, and this is simple. And the more and more, and I see carnivores growing. I, I don't know how many carnivores were here five years or 10 years ago or 20 <laughs> years ago. But we know that how many people are joining the ranks. And when you hear the story in a way that is not difficult, it's like, it's so simple. You can't have boyfriends and girlfriends along with your husband or wife or your boyfriend <laughs> or girlfriend. You can't have variety. That's the biggest killer for all of us. We need to narrow it down and focus on what we are, and that is lionesses and lions. That's and when right. you do that, you're like, wow, it's like this is easy. But That's the right. paradigm, the brainwashing the of, of vegetables are good and fruit is good and you know, it's it's the it's the it's the green, the green uh, brainwashing uh, that we've been doing uh, all around all around the globe for thousands of years. It's got to we got to change it. I completely agree. Oh, I thought you you was gonna say something, Carrie. Yeah. So, Doctor Kills, if there's a a young couple out there and they they want to start a family. And they, they, of course, they want the baby to be healthy. They want the whole family to be healthy. But this whole carnivore thing, proper human diet thing, is just insane to most people. How do you? What advice do you give to a couple like that? Well, it's it's a it's an easy one, but it's hard for those listening. And I ask the simple question: Is sugar good for you? And the answer is no. And then they say, Well, I don't eat any sugar. I said, fruits, fiber, and vegetables turn into sugar. Did you know that? Gee, I didn't think about that. So ultimately, the sugar diet is what we're eating because we're eating a plant-based diet. And and just you don't even have to worry about all the plant chemicals and all those other things. Even the sprayed on stuff, you don't have to worry about it. But I, I always start, you know, I try to get their story, how long they've been trying, have they in pregnancies, any miscarriages, any of the medical disorders. One gal today had... Um, 
history of 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 a topic a topic pregnancy uh irritable bowel syndrome um and, and um oh and she had part of her colon already moved removed and mm. so you know i dig deep but it only takes a few minutes to get their history i ask everyone what they eat and it's usually clean organic healthy um you name it you know that's that's the story but i'm no no exactly what you eat and it's always fruits vegetables almond milk oat milk and lean meat which i go right down to it and i said you're eating a deadly diet and it's silence mm-hmm. but i don't let go i write books on it but i keep talking about it and i'm slowly simple what you're doing isn't working and the doctors keep telling you to continue to eat plants but they break down to sugar but fatty meat contains all the minerals vitamins and nutrients you and your uh, uh, future your children and your your eggs and sperm and embryos need that that is what you need to do and i call it the baby's way bacon eggs butter beef kilts is ice cream from time to time i think it's okay and and salt and and it just clears the mind of all the the messes but you have to you have to do it it's it's yeah. it's so opposite and like anything else, we've got to just do it. Do mm-hmm. or do not, there be no try. Well, my doctor says it's bad. I say, well, what he's doing or she is doing making you pregnant yet? No. <laughs> they won't even touch you because you're too fat. And and they don't even know the number of overweight women who have babies naturally all day long. Why you? I got plenty of thin people don't have babies all the time. And, and so I, I really just hone on the fact that your body never has to eat a plant. It's never required. And it's likely the single leading cause of every disease we suffer from. And if you want to keep doing what you're doing, thinking you're going to get something better, you could pay me a lot of money. But I also have a lot of people on our blogs, 44, 48, getting pregnant on, on carnivore diets. So amazingly simple. It's radical. And people think, well, I'll never get pregnant. I'm saying, well, number one is don't think that way. You got you to gotta think as if you are and you will get there and never give up. And if you do, mm-hmm. give it up to God and have faith and just, you know, visualize the baby in your, in your arms, in your life and in all ways. And I think that's the best way. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it sounds you tell the story as a physician who, you know, diet doesn't matter or Mediterranean diet. And, and the, the gal was who is a gastroenterologist telling your diet doesn't matter. She's got IBS. Um, and, and diet doesn't matter and eat Mediterranean. And then when she, she hears the story, she goes like, they're lying to me. And, and so again, I specialize in fertility, but I, you know, so many patients, they're suffering from all the other diseases. And in literally two to four weeks on carnivore at any weight, they'll suddenly feel like, wow, I feel amazing. And then they look at their partners, and the partners look at them, and they're like, okay, let's do it. Let's get it done. <laughs> having, Pretty simple. Right. <laughs> it's having all a it. family and having children and starting a family is obviously, without saying, one of the most important, beautiful things for people. What is it like for you as a doctor to be able to be such an integral part of that? And I'm sure over the years you've had so many stories where many people were hopeless and now they have a thriving family. Well, I feel very, very blessed to be able to be in this space to help people. Um, it's it's a, the greatest hardship is, I believe, infertility or pregnancy loss or miscarriage fetal demise or, or any of these things, because ultimately reproduction is what we're here for. We're not here to be doctors. We're not here to do anything else other than um, build our families and, and then take care of our families in ways that we're meant to um, and share a faithful existence and also the right proper human nutrition, which is fatty meat, salt water, throw in a little Kilsa's ice cream time to time and that's all you it's- need to do. And but, share but the it, love. It's remark. It's sharing love every day, and I, I again, I feel blessed. It 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 um, doesn't work the way we hope sometimes, but I always say God is a mission that we just have to be patient with and have faith and 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 never give up to it. But 
Um, I, I've been, I'm 67 and a half and I've been doing this since for a long time, almost 40 years. And, and I just love it every single day. And I, I can't imagine doing anything else but this. Wow. Awesome. That is awesome and thriving and thriving. I love, I love the message. I love the way you present it. I love what you're doing and, and, uh, I appreciate you so much for it. I, I read a quote this week. It says too many of us care more about how our lives look rather than how our lives are. And, and I think you touched on that perfectly. You know, we have to do it. That's the main takeaway that I got from today. Um, you know, we have to do it, put that choice in one step at a time. If you can't walk yet, crawl. I mean, yeah. it, you you don't have to do it perfect. Just do what you can do with what you have, and and you know we'll figure it out together. How about that? You know that's absolutely so true. And and you even if you are are locked up in a in a bed and you can't move or a wheelchair and you can't get up and out the way you used to, and I see so many people that are that are inhibited in their physical, but they still have their mind. And the mind is the real master. And that's why I think listening and reading positivity, uh, love and forgiveness, gratitude, uh, everything I, I listen to from everyone here, I've listened to you many times, and it's always a positivity. We're listening in, in to all those that are suffering. Mm -hmm. And suffering is is the sort of that the flare that that is looking for another flare out there to bring the light to each of us. And I know for myself that sometimes – you get caught up in like, hey, I know the answer. More and more, I'm realizing I have to listen more. Listen to the stories. And as we said, it's a story. And then we connect because we've all been through some of it in one way or another. And and that's the part I think that's critical. Tell your story. That's why the movie is so important. And I've even inspired by you guys to inspire my Kilts Mighty Tribe that let's we're going to do a KMT movie. We're going to all shine the light and put this out there together yeah. and inspire people that are suffering, whether it's you're, 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 you feel as if you're overweight, you can't move, you're depressed, you're down, or you have a myriad of all the diseases that we've signed up, lined up as the, your problem, but you only have inflammation that shows up as different diseases including depression anxiety suicidality criminality i'll go down the list inferiority fearfulness it, it's all of it and we in medicine think it's genetic and i, I talked to a, a young gal uh, this this afternoon um that was like all these diseases are life let's it's, it's for life pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome is life sentence type 2 diabetes is for life mm. and and so it's imperative that this story gets shared more and more. And the beauty is, as a carnivore, you're like the gladiator. You, you're the warrior. You don't care. You're going to go out there, and if they're going to cut your head off, albeit we just get back up and keep going. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Put yeah. me back in the game, coach. That's all that's I need. Right. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Look at the the Mongols or or the or or the Vikings or the barbarians. I mean, they're meat eaters. Mm -hmm. they're meat eaters and they know how to keep going and and you know we're not here to I, listen i don't fight against anything my intention is to work for it and yeah. and by sharing the stories of those people that have succeeded like i know everyone here it's like wow there's someone just like me size shape age weight gender color doesn't yeah. matter politics it doesn't matter where you are in this world the story is there for all of us to realize that we're all the same right mm -hmm. Absolutely. yeah you can hold to your beliefs and it is what it is but the more we work together the more we come mm -hmm. together the more that we help each other out encourage one another you can focus on the positive or you can focus on the negative everybody knows those people who are against things like you said you're going to get a lot further. You're going to be a lot more peaceful and a lot more happy when you focus on the positive and what you can come together about. And I think that's a, that's a very, very big point. And struggling and suffering is part of the game mm -hmm. of life. And, that's and, right. and uh, you got to embrace these things, but the, what you need to do now is reach out. And that's why I love the, 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 the struggling um, uh, team. It's a, a team of strugglers. 
uh, uh, the misfits in some way, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and being a misfit is like the best fit of life because as an, as an outcast, uh, you, you're, you're able to see things most people are, aren't seeing, but someone will show up to help you and guide you on the way. That's what I know. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's a, that's the thing with all carnivores. We're all misfits or we're a little weird or I said it earlier, you got to be kind of brave to be a carnivore because you're sort of going against everything you've ever been told. But I think that's why it's such a strong community, too, because we, we all kind of need each other. And it's nice to nice to have each other and definitely see things differently uh, living this way for sure. Yeah, I went I went to a polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, conference uh, a week ago. It was great people doing amazing things, helping so many um, people suffering from polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is really prediabetes. It's a metabolic syndrome, uh, but I call it plant-caused ovarian sickness. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. And everything we're su- suffering from is plant-caused. Just mm-hmm. throw PC, whatever you want to do. And um, the dietitian and, and the therapist and some other great, amazing people, but my words were like, never heard before so i was in i was in like uh, uh enemy territory in a sense and and, oh, wow. and i and i and i but but we well the the dietitian we 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 differed in our opinions but we we graciously listened to each other and and uh, i found it very very uh, inviting and that's where we need to be we need to be in territory where words haven't been heard and that's where I think the gospel needs to be spoken. And again, this isn't a religion. It's a life practice that brings back to the lion's way. Mm-hmm. You are what you eat, and lions we be. Absolutely. It's not a religion, but it sure does help to have one and tie them together. I mean, you know, they go hand in hand. You can't separate the mind, body, and soul. It's all one, right? It's all one. It's community. And again, whether you're, whatever your religious belief systems that that fasting and eating fatty meat is still part of that and mm-hmm. and i think that is something quite amazing you know i, I talk a lot about keto uh, because we want to invite people wherever they're at and as a keto it's high fat and eat less frequently and you'll feel better but carnivore will like be like you're looking around is like does anyone else know this secret <laughs> it's just like, it's just, like, is it just me that feels like the most awesome human being ever created? I, I, I've said that in a couple of videos, Dr. Kiltz. I'm like, you deserve to feel like this. Just if, for <laughs> one day in your life, you're missing out. No you know, inclination whatsoever. I feel amazing every single day on Carnivore for six months now. I'm, I've got, I'm a broken record. I say the same thing all the time. It's, you know, it's eat fatty meat and repeat, right? And, yep. and you can occasionally have a cookie cake or ice cream. But if you're one of those people that still uses the words, I'm addicted, don't ever use those words, by the way, um, you know, then then give it a little time. And, you know, again, from time to time. Interesting. Most people don't know that amino acids from proteins are converted to sugar before they become fat in the liver. So amino acids and sugar are actually metabolized the same way. So a high protein diet is deadly for us. It is a high fat, medium to low protein and low to no plants. That's my basic way. And I do eat some French fries from time to time. And I do occasionally have a cookie cake or ice cream, but um, that's a treat and I never cheat because Tia would be mad at me for cheating. (laughs) Real quick, real quick, Dr. Kiltz, there's a question for you here. Oh, yeah, Adam, please. Thank you. Yep. Love this. I saw improvement and want to continue, but have dental issues. So struggling to chew steak, al- allergic to dairy, fish, seafood. What do I eat? Well, you eat beef and, and you, you ground beef is great. And and, you, and and even raw beef, ground beef is the best. And throw an egg in there and forget fish and dairy. Number one is the problem with dairy. It's not from a human breast milk. It's from a cow's. Some people are more allergenic to cow's milk because it's foreign milk. So you might try goat milk or goat cheese or or butter, but but I'd say once you heal the glycobiome, the glycocalyx is the sugar layer that protects the skin on the outside and the skin on the inside. 
every cell is coated with a glycocalyx. And tomorrow, with Stephen Thomas and Richard Smith on UK Carnivore, I think that's it, their show at 2 o'clock, I'm going to talk about the glycobiome and the glycocalyx. Uh, but, you know, fish, I don't touch fish very often. It stinks. And fish is 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 uh, evolves in the oceans of the world, and the oceans of the world are highly contaminated with whatever we consume and we piss or poop it goes in the waters and then all the stuff we dump in there anyway uh, is not good so i don't touch those anyway fatty meat salt water raw is very best if you haven't read pottinger's cats you got to read pottinger's cats pottinger did a really great study where he he cooked the meat and pasteurized the milk or it was raw meat and raw milk the cats that were fed the pasteurized or cooked pasteurized milk or cooked meat were harmed their current generation and future generations those animals that ate the raw they were healthy and well we're likely meant to eat raw meat you're better off getting some really good fatty meat and and gr grounding up yourself and putting in some eggs uh that's what i would do and don't forget you know salt it up with some good either redmond's malden himalayans and there's so many great oh, salts yeah. out there i think it's the best and and then i add butter it's it's salt is the spice and butter is the sauce. I don't use anything else on my on my uh, meats. Okay, that's a lie. I do occasionally blue cheese melted uh, from time to time. I love that. We have another question here. I'm in a plasma donor trial to see effects of donating every two week eight x two x in now. Uh, if I start carnivore now, are supervisors likely to see shocking effects in blood samples? and have questions yeah they'll think you're a lion they're like oh my god he's got blood of a lion i haven't seen this before uh, i i don't know that answer but all i can tell you is that you'll you'll feel better and you'll be donating blood to to those that are going to get the very best uh blood samples plasma and rbcs red blood cells packed uh for sure they might i mean your cholesterol goes up and all those things that they say are are, are signs or, or or indicators of disease uh, might show something, but I don't believe they're true at all. And actually, awesome. And let us know. See what see what they say. I'm interested, right? For sure. What before you have to take off? What what's some good stuff that you're reading right now that might help us out? Oh 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 oh. Uh, let's see. Well, I I'm just finishing up. Uh, let's see. It's uh, white. Oh my God! It's uh, dead white, and uh, it's by by. Um, Got a, uh, uh, Pure White and Deadly by John Yudkin. But I just pulled a book out by sh about sugar by James Walvin. I started listening to it. We've got to learn about the, the actual history of, of the, the production and manufacturing of sugar around the globe and how it's evolved. And basically, it's the, it's the biggest drug. And, and mm -hmm. still today, it's the biggest drug. I'm reading that, and, um, and we're going to get to Ravenous again. Ravenous by Sam Apple, which is about Otto Warburg's work. And um, and uh, always read the Bible every day or some excerpts of the Bible. That's really helpful. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, sir. It's Carnivore. my pleasure, you guys. No, thank Carnivore. you what you guys are doing. Carnivore Scott says, thank you, Dr. Kiltz. Let's see. My there was, pleasure. There was again, another we're, one here for you. Yeah, go ahead. I'm done. For oh, Kilt Kiltz's ice cream. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Five bucks for a Kiltz's ice cream. <laughs> and remember this. This is why it's so important that people have to understand this. Plant sugars are not killing you. Excessive plant sugars and low fat. That's what the deadly thing. And eating three to six meals a day. We're meant to eat one meal a day or less. And look at drkilts.com. We got a lot of stuff there for free, by the way. And uh, don't forget to donate. Uh, to uh, carnivore diet movie, really important. I'm putting a thousand dollars in, and um, and let's let's meet that and do better, and let's invest in everyone's health and wellness around the globe, because we're killing people globally on a plant based, low animal fat diet. Done. Yes. Thank you so much, Doctor. You're amazing. Kim. You're you're too generous, and uh, we're we're so thankful to have you here. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you so I much. I love you guys. Love I'm you, you too, brother. brother. Appreciate you. Man. Yeah. Love you, brother. Have a great day. See you, Press guys. That button. Press that button. <laughs> Press that button. Press that button. Every day. Right. I gotta find That's it. Right. <laughs> That's right. You guys. See you. It's coming. I love you guys.